Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I am excited to introduce to you a special guest. Her name is Marnie Goldman, and she is a spiritual life coach and the author of True to Myself, Peace, Love, and Marnie. Go Goldman is the daughter of a drug-addicted mother who has survived a life of depression, ADHD, childhood PTSD, anxiety, and leukemia diagnosis. Goldman works with people worldwide to help them transcend and heal emotional traumas. So it is a pleasure to have you on the show. And just um, tell the audience a little about yourself. Okay, wow. Well, I have survived a lifetime of trauma, um, infant trauma. I mean, not to be cliche, but four months old when your biological father leaves. And it was a domino effect and abandonment. And my entire life, I always thought I was crazy, lazy, or stupid. And then when I was 47, I was diagnosed with everything, ADHD, I'm 52 now, OCD, mm -hmm. clinical depression, borderline. So it was like, wait a second, there's a reason why I always got stuck. There's a reason why I can't get out of bed. There's a reason I've had suicidal thoughts. Oh my gosh. So then the healing process happened and I put all the dots together and my whole life was a made for TV movie. I, and I say that seriously, it's like Jackie Collins meets mental health. So <laughs> I was always going to write a book, but once I realized, wait, this is now my, a mental health thing. This was pre COVID. I realized I could help people by sharing my story that they right. are not crazy, lazy, or stupid. And I never realized it became my passion, my purpose. I love to inspire and let people know they're not alone because I shouldn't be here. And I just keep going and keep going. And so that is pretty much my message through the unimaginable trauma I've been through that I'm still here smiling. It's remarkable. You know, some, a lot of times when people don't realize when we have issues in our lives, we don't realize that a lot of the times it's the it goes back to infantile. It goes back to our tr childhood life, growing up in the environment that we grew up with, our family life, um, any type of traumatic events that may have occurred in our life. And um, did you notice symptoms when you were younger? Like, did you start to notice when all these things were happening in your in your family life, the, the changes in your behavior and so forth? Absolutely. Because looking back, when I was eight years old, my other father left and we were not allowed to talk about it. So now looking back at my teenage years, the promiscuity, the neediness, the lack of self-worth I've had, the severe bullying when I was a teenager made me feel worthless. So looking back at all of those things, had I known about what depression was and how these are triggers, but it set me up for a life of, by not understanding and the unhealed in me, absolutely set me up for trauma looking back now, especially the promiscuity, that, that sticks with me as a young girl. You know, so so many times, like people, you know, we go through these these issues when we're we're a child, and we we don't really understand what's going on. We're like, you know, our behaviors are changing. We think it's normal because we're in that environment, and we don't realize. When did you start to realize that? Hey, you know, I'm not I'm not thinking on the right level. I'm not feeling happy. I'm not, you know, I I I'm. W something has to be going on. And when did you reach out for the help? When did you realize that? Did someone have to tell you? Did you just feel it inside and so forth? I've always felt it inside, but as my daughter approached turning 17, which when my, that was the dramatic turning point in my life, I was left, my mother was on crack and had thrown me physically, her wow. boyfriend, out of the car. And I was left on a highway in 1987. Oh there's no social media. And so as my daughter started to get to 17, I was getting very depressed. And that is when I said, you know what, something's not right here. So I went to the doctor and that's when I was diagnosed at 47, the same time my daughter was turning 17. Ironically, I'm working through something as of this minute. My son is 17 today. Um, he has special needs and he was born with a rare genetic disorder. So him turning 17, I think, how could he be left alone in this world? Like it's right. unimaginable to me. So I'm trying to work through any trigger that I have Right. right now. So being aware of triggers is, I think, the most crucial. How I your body senses stuff. 
I think it's very crucial because a lot of times when you're in an environment, you think it's normal. And a lot of times what pe happens is people pass on the same traits to their, their children and because they don't realize that something is not right. They think the behavior that they're exhibiting is normal. And then the children learn from the parent and then it keeps cycling and cycling and cycling. And, you know, I think it's great that you were able to find, figure it out because, you know, in, a, in, a, in our world, a lot of times there's so much stigmatism that people tell you, don't say anything. People are going to look at you differently. They're going to react and, and, and not treat you the same. And that's how we grew up as well. Exactly. The subject is taboo. People are like, I don't want them to think I'm crazy. And then I say, well, why do you care? And most people cannot answer me. Like, tell me, why do you, first of all, they don't put it on a billboard. You know, so-and-so is going for therapy and nobody's perfect. Like right. we all have something. So exactly, you know, they're more abnormal by saying there's nothing wrong with you. And as far as the generational, the trauma that I put upon my children with them watching me having breakdowns and sobbing hysterically and my daughter driving to save my life. Those things break my heart every day that they had to see that. So this is where it stops, that right. no more, this is not healthy. You know, and I mean, years, it never occurred to anybody to say when I was 10, let's take Marnie for therapy because she's had three fathers already. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. so I grew up lost thinking this was norm and not loving myself. And that's why I named my book, Stay True to Yourself, is bizarre as you people think you are if that's what makes you feel good wearing four wigs at a time yeah. do it and the right. right people will find you and you know it's so many times when you go through all this stuff you 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 have such low self-esteem because you feel you're worthless you go through life and people are telling you you're worthless or they're treating you like you're worthless and then you come into life feeling like you're worthless and then you don't strive for the stars because you don't think you're worthy of it so you know when you see people you know or you're yourself you know with when you you said you had low self-esteem how did you work on your self-esteem to get yourself to a point where you felt good about yourself, that you could look in the mirror and say, I love who I see. I like that person. It's so bizarre because it, I actually say vanity has caused my insanity. When I, <laughs> the only family I did have only loved me if I were thin and pretty or the best uh. you could be. So yeah. there, that set up my eating disorder. So I went to treatment like my early 20s. I was not ready for it. Right. Um, I look, I have such obsessive neurosis when it comes to how I look, looking in the mirror 50 times before I leave. But once I started to love myself on the inside, I realized you know, I'm not 30 anymore. I don't yeah. have, that, you know, I've had two children. I'm probably menopausal at 52. Right. So my body has to change. But I realized mm -hmm. it, I, everyone always fixated on my outer surface that my inner beauty is more beautiful than in any outside prettiness. So that just radiates for me that I just look at myself now. I'm like, you know what? I'm not a size two forever. If I'm a size four or size six, it's okay. It's right. okay to eat. You know, it's okay. Yeah. I suffer with that tremendously. I mean, um, because I have borderline, it's like PTSD. It's either red or black, white right. or black, you know, eat or don't eat. So finding that medium, it's something I work on every day, every meal. I think that's amazing because you went through, was there a denial stage in your life? Did you go, didn't want to really have to admit that these things are wrong? You know, because once you admit to it and once you're not, you know, that means you have to actually face it. So how did you feel about that? I love talking about it. It was like cathartic for some reason. I like held in this secret. Like I opened up in my book about my eating disorder and taking laxatives and diet pills and um, water retention pills, anything to stay thin. And all that was was a Band-Aid. You know, right. yeah, I'm five pounds thinner now from the diuretic, but it comes right back. So I had to just learn and accept. I don't look at scales. I don't look at like size. I just, if it fits great, if it gets too tight, I know I have to stop munching. That's so all. I think that's great because you went through the denial stage, you accepted who you were, you you were able to, by accepting it, you were able to actually start to love yourself. And that's when you start working on your self-esteem and feeling good and learning not so much it's important on the outside, but what's important on the inside. And, yeah. you know, for somebody who, you know, gets into that, you know, you know, it, it, once they, they break through and they're not in denial anymore and they start to accept what's going on, 
on. So you suggest to maybe talk about it, get all those repressed emotions out? Absolutely. When people hold their emotions in, I say it's like taking a ball and holding it underwater. And the minute you let go of that ball, it out. And you don't want that to happen on anybody or yourself or anything. Reaching out and awareness was the key to my recovery across the board. Yeah. Once I was able to say, I have this, I'm aware I have this, what do I do? Reaching out, there's no reason anybody in this day and age should suffer alone. There isn't because there's so much support and you realize you're not alone. Right. And you know, when we, what people think of us is none of our business. So right. if we're worried, what are they going to think? I need to be thin for these people. Those aren't your people. Be what's good for you. You know, it's exactly. there, there's so much love on the inside. It's just a band aid trying to cover. You know, my being thin was my way of being accepted. People loved me. People were kinder to me. But people are just as kind to me as a size four as I was a size zero, whether it's Lululemon or not. But you yes. know what I mean. And I know exactly so, what you mean. You know, so I accept who I am and I realize nobody's perfect. Everyone's airbrushed or, and I tell people, don't compare, don't right. go on and look and think, oh, she has this great, you know, their boat, look at her body. We all, well, not we all, but most of us, we all touch up and want to show our best. I mean, come yes. on. And we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So you're comparing yourself to something fake. So don't compare. I beg people not to compare. No, because everybody is different. And you know what, 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 what someone perceives on the outside is not always how they feel on the inside. And what's most important is you can't help others unless you help yourself. So I always tell people, you got to really think about you and, and think about, you know, helping yourself first because your priority, because how do you help the people you love if you're not, you're not even in a stable point yourself? I could not be a mother when I was sobbing for months, not leaving my bedroom in the dark room. I'll never get those days back. I'll never get my daughter's tear game back. So it's just remarkable when you see that light. And right. it's just, it just really fascinates me how people don't realize the resilience they have also. Mm -hmm. and, and just loving yourself unconditionally and know, just find your passion and your joy and you will get better. People will love themselves just by not people pleasing. Don't people please because then you right. get resentful and have boundaries. I mean, I could not be a mother again crying. So I know I need to be healthy as I can to even right. do my business. You know, I don't beat myself up. Oh, I should have so many clients. I'm so proud that I actually started my business and yes. I do have clients. So my journey is different than your journey. And right. I think, you know, I was so in awe reading your bio and your <laughs> website. I was like, you are like everything I aspire to want to be. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it's very cool. You know, the talking right now is part of my healing, talking to you about this. I love this. This is the most cathartic thing for me. I think it's great because when I was looking on your website, I was so amazed by your website and all the accomplishments that you've gone through. We have very similar paths. We have, and we actually help to heal ourselves the same way. And I, I feel like, you know, what you're doing right now is basically what I'm trying to teach as well. You know, when people, you know, there's steps to healing ourselves. And, you know, just like you mentioned, you know, now how do you feel about goal setting? Because I feel like goal setting is very important when you're trying to build your self-esteem, build yourself up and trying to get to a higher level in life when you want to self-improve yourself. How do you feel about goal setting? Well, first of all, I'm a goal digger. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so baby steps, because I made a list and then I just got overwhelmed again. And then I got depressed and anxiety. So I say small things, but make your bed every day. Right. To me, that's one thing accomplished. It starts your day off, but right. not to overwhelm. I tell people to do baby steps. Right. If you don't leave your house, to me, just going to the mailbox at that exactly. time. Exactly. Baby steps. Open the window. You know, open the bring the light in. Don't if you're in a dark shaded room. Very small steps, not to overwhelm yourself. Realistic goals. I feel the same way. I think baby steps are really good because people get overwhelmed very easily. Short term goal. You could have short term goals and long term goals, but it doesn't mean you have to accomplish them in a day. If you do one thing, just like you mentioned, give yourself a pat on the back. I don't believe mm -hmm. in the word failure. I think no. failure. I think when you try or you have an incentive to try, that is huge, don't you think? Failure is not trying. Yes. That's the failure. You trying is the best thing that you could do because you're stepping out of that comfort zone. When you do that feeling of gratification and yes. wow. So I think it's, it's really, it's remarkable. I will preach that, live by it. 
And I'm big on gratification. I think people should have gratitude. We don't realize it, I think, but the little things in life mean so much. How do you feel about that? Because I okay. think, go ahead. No, we're connected. No, we're connected because many times in my life I was homeless. My, when my daughter was a little girl. So I tell people, the fact you have a house, like if COVID happened when I was homeless, I don't know right. what I would have done. You have a you have a food on your table. Those little things, like someone was complaining to me, they're like, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm like, but you're in a <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> Stop complaining. You're air conditioning. Right. Yeah. So it's being grateful that you wake up every day. It's a privilege yeah. to wake up. And it's a choice to wake up and be happy or be sad. It's, you know, I picked happy. I've been sad way too long. But gratitude for the smallest things, whatever it may be, I'm grateful that. I just met you. I am grateful that I am here, you know, with a roof over my head because right. a lot of people do not. So gratitude's the best attitude. Yeah, you know, I, I feel it's a very powerful thing. And people, I think, and especially in the United States, we are blessed with so many things that we don't realize how lucky we are. Because until those little things get taken away from us, then we realize how much they meant to us. Now, how do you feel about journaling, you know, and writing things down? Oh, it's the best. I mean, you, you'd want to say something sometimes to somebody or you're in a rage. And for me, that's how I was able to write my book by my years of journaling. And it's just that writing and getting it out and purging your thoughts and not sending it because I used to push send and do that for real. And uh -uh. But getting it out, feels mm -hmm. so good. then you can reflect and go back and say, look, wow, I can't believe I was so upset over what she did or what he did. And right. He growth and it's another self-awarded pat on your back that you can give yourself now you talk about negativity and getting rid of the negativity now i found in life that so many people are so negative that they look for the worst that could possibly happen and that that creates fear in people's lives and when they they have so much fear they can't get out of that bubble because they're isolated with fear and you know so how do you feel about those people you know that carry so much negativity and think the worst of the worst how do you help somebody like that those energy suckers, you know, they are horrible to be around. And I compare it to like putting a rotten fruit next to another fruit, the other fruit will get rotten. Misery loves company. So if I personally, if I see something on Facebook, someone you should be friends with, I'm like, ooh. So unfollow, blocked, anything that's going to remind you of someone or something that gives you a bad feeling. Somebody, let's say you're invited to the neighborhood barbecue. Oh, I have to go, but she's so rude. No, you don't have to go. Protect your peace. Protect your peace bubble. Don't put yourself in any position where you know you're going to leave there being emotionally drained. I have people that when you call them, they're like, I'm like, hey, and they're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, okay, you know, and I make an excuse, and I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you later because I'm not going to waste the precious energy I have, like an emotional debit card on somebody miserable. And I think people love to just complain. It makes them feel better about their lives. And right. those people I avoid, it's like the gossipers and all of that stuff. Avoid right. that makes them, their lives are so bad. So I just say, avoid it the best you can. If it's a coworker, don't engage. I agree. I agree. Because if you ever notice, sometimes when you're around somebody or even talking to them over the phone and they're, they're in negative spirits, you feel <sighs> like when you get off the phone or you leave their presence, you feel like the energy out of you has been sucked yeah. out, you know, out of yourself. It took me 52 years to realize that this one person I would call and she'd always go, hey, what's up? And I would <laughs> hang up like so depressed. I was like, it was a jolly freaking mood when I called you. Right. So I, avoid, I don't do it. I will not put my, nobody's that important to ruin my peace. It's not. I so work too hard. hard. So you don't you tell people, so you think to tell, it's good to tell people, you know what, don't feel guilty if you have people you know that are negative, you know, if they're going to bring you down, then you need to have a wall up and push those negative, neg negative people outside yourself. Exactly. You know? Boundaries don't make you a bitch. You don't have to be rude, you know, and I tell people yeah. like, in an episode, like you could just say, um, I'm not able to talk right now. Just protect that because why is it, why are you going to waste your time because you don't want to upset them? Why are they more important? Your peace is more important. So I always say you don't have to be bitchy about it because people feel guilty not talking or doing. But if it makes you feel like drained like that, I always say just, just protect your peace. Have those boundaries. Now, when people are negative all the time, they look at everything in a negative aspect. What, what advice do you give them? How do you get them to change their mind frame? Because there's a silver lining on everything. 
everything has a silver lining. So if somebody's like, I'm so upset, I didn't make the cheer team because you weren't supposed to. There, I always say if Jennifer Hudson would have won American Idol, she wouldn't have become an EGOT. Right. You know, so, you know, it's <laughs> true. I come up with the craziest analogy. I love it. I love it. Right? Yeah. Because it's true. At the moment, she must have been devastated on American Idol when she was had to go home. Remember when they would sing, you had your last day as they yes. were thinking? <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Right. And now she is a superstar. So with all rejection, it's not rejection, it's redirection. Find the silver lining on everything. And yeah. that's how I tell people to take that negative and turn it into a positive. And I feel that strengthens a person too, because the power of positivity is big. I think if, you you know, we go through, everyone has obstacles in their lives. It's how we, you know, how we battle those obstacles and how we get through them is what matters. And I feel like there's always a reason for everything. You know, I think sometimes those obstacles can make you stronger. How do you feel about that? Everything, that, when they say everything happens for a reason, it does. We may not know the reason immediately, but everything comes full circle and puts you exactly where you're supposed to be at this moment. If people, if you look back at your life, you've survived, everyone has survived 100% of their worst days. Right. So we can do it. But I always tell people just the um, inner strength that we have to spiritual stamina to believe we are being placed, good or bad. Right. For- even better. We, I mean, I have been negative $8 in my account and I just said, I know something's going to happen. Boom. Mm-hmm. And just trust the universe. It's gotten everybody yes. this far. You know, I, I totally believe um, exactly what you're saying because I, I live life very similar to the ways that you live life. And now you're a spiritual coach. Can you explain to people what a spiritual coach, coach is? Basically, what I was saying before is just having developing enough spiritual stamina to understand you're right. You may not love the um, the city you're living in right now or the person that comes over every day, you know, is a nuisance, but you will move. And to basically understand to just trust the universe. If your coffee spills on you and you're five minutes late, you weren't supposed to be there. Right. being protected so if you get a red light when you're driving you know what you are being protected stop yes. on things you can't control so if you it's like the serenity prayer accept mm-hmm. what you can control and once you accept what you cannot control right control the weather the red lights or any of that stuff so it's like okay was it meant to be and i practice that with everything a flight was canceled was it meant to be right and that's what i preach to people over and over a hundred different ways because I feel that's one thing that I, when I see people so stressed all the time is because they want to be in control. They have to feel like they're in control, but I don't feel that we're in control. I believe the universe is in control and everything yeah. happens for a reason. And I listen, oh, I'm sorry, go on. No, I was going to ask you how you feel about that. I listen to my gut instinct. How many times, I mean, that is our little angel or something, even the random things that pop in your head is directing you for something. Sometimes the most random things, we live life in the moments as we're living day to day. And, you know, and I just trust completely that the universe has my back. I mean, we are introduced to people for reasons that we don't know, but we are, it, it, it happens for a reason. What the people I spoke to got me to them, to meet you, to meet this one. It happened. I, this, I was supposed to meet you today for right. whatever reason. Yeah. And that's with everything in life. I mean, I've gone through so much that how can I not trust the universe? Right. I'm a lot, you know? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I've gone through so many things in life and I'm like, how did, how did I come out of all these things? And it's because it's meant to be. We have people watching over us. And I believe the intuitiveness that we carry is part of our sixth sense. It's oh. just, and everybody has it, don't you think? It's just being able to tune into it. I see signs every time. If I'm talking about something and I look down, I see a feather. I'm thinking, what was I just thinking about? There's the feather. I mean, we all have that sixth sense, that psychic ability, but you people need to be attuned to it. Sometimes they're like, oh, that's so weird. I was just thinking about you. People always have that sixth sense. I take it to a different level because I am obsessed with, you know, when I have this different synchronicities or I think something and it happens and I just love mediums. And I, I mean, it's just, I believe so much in the angels. I mean, you're a human angel. That's why you're (laughs) still alive and you needed to be here to help other people. Right. So that was your destiny. And if you didn't go through all your experiences, you wouldn't have your story, your podcast, your businesses. So with all the hardship you went through, 
look why you're here. Oh, I think, I think, you know, if we didn't go through our obstacles, we wouldn't view life the way we did. If we had an easy, you know, easy path and we, you know, nothing happened that happened to us, like all the trauma in your life that you described throughout the show, would that have, you know, where do you think you would have been? Because you definitely wouldn't be here talking to me. You know, I'm sure you would have looked life at, at, at from a different perspective or live life differently. Completely, completely. I was always told just to marry someone with money, marry someone with money. I was never told to love yourself or be independent or anything else. The humility I had since I'm a little girl, the kindness, the this, um, compassion I had for people. So all of the good that came out of that, I was able to instill those into my daughter who it just, I have, I would have been a nasty, bitchy person. I think I would have just had right. anger or if I, but I would have been had a very boring life. So people, they feel sad sometimes. I'm like, no, I have a great story and wisdom to share. I don't regret anything because I just live here in the now. I have no regrets because then I can't enjoy life. I think it's great. Children. Because, you know, so basically you're telling people get out of the denial stage, you know, yes. accept that you have issues, you know, realize, listen to yourself and accept that something's not going right. When you see signs and when you think, see things going on in your life that don't seem normal, don't seem like, you know, that, that things that should be in your life, you know, accept it, look for help, figure out what's going on and then love yourself. You know, don't, yes. don't get angry because everybody's not perfect. And then, you know, and then you don't you're telling me don't repress those emotions but speak about them talk to somebody and let those emotions out even if you have to just put it on a journal and nobody sees it at least you're getting it out there and i agree with you so much and then you're just basically telling people to just live life because everything happens for a reason and there is there is a reason for everything and you're talking about the universe and how you know and i believe it also because you're saying that you know the world is made of energy because you know if you look at it i think it's 99% of, of the world is energy. And you're saying to listen to the universe, listen to your sixth sense. Now, you know, it, I heard, you know, I was reading that you came out with a book recently. Can you tell me a little about that book? My book is insane because again, it sounds like you're reading a fiction book. I mean, it's these characters and these situations, simplicities of life, whether it's a high school graduation prom, I never went through any of that. I talk about how I was physically abused, sexually abused, homeless, the, the thing, everything that would be normal, a proposal, the tragic life of me just begging for some place to live. And then I said, I cannot live like this anymore. And I said, I am going to take my broken and turn it into beautiful. And I'm going to share my story. And I know no matter what age you are, no matter who you are, I can relate to any, our situations may be different, but the emotions are the same. Yeah. So whatever, I mean, whether you had an affair, whether you have family of drugs, but I have celebrity in my story. I mean, it's really, it's an engaging story, but you come full circle. I made part of it um, a journal, ask yourself questions. How would you handle this situation? Right. Have you ever not felt loved? What would you do differently today? I mean, when I, the person I am today, what I've learned from writing it and healing even more so goes back to our childhood because nobody ever again talks about mental health. So people are walking around wounded and taking it out everywhere. And I tell people, reach out. You know, they, it's it's so much easier than suffering alone. There's, it's anonymous. Nobody has to know. You don't have to tell your family, but you will take out. And I tell people to communicate too. Like if you're in a yeah. bad mood, you're like, what? I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just in a situation because people want to yell back at you. Right. And then you forget why you're arguing. So I try to create peace in every circumstance. Now, with all the disorders that you mentioned, it seems like you have to make a lifestyle change because this is not something that, you know, these, you know, anger, anxiety, you know, bipolar, um, you know, um, you know, stress, stress, you know, having, having post-traumatic stress disorder. These are things that could easily come back. So you have to constantly be on the ball and constantly, you know, probably have to make a lifestyle change and take care of yourself daily. It's not something like, you know, going on a diet and going off the diet, you know, what's going to happen? You're going to gain the weight back. And I'm sure it's, it's the same thing with when you're battling with all these disorders. 
Yep, I call it emotional sobriety. Like every minute, every second of the day I am living it. If I start to get like a little bit sweaty, I think to myself, what's making me anxious? And I think it through. So being aware of every every second of the day, like even before I started this interview, I was getting a little like shaky because it's that unknown, the anxiety. Yes. And then once you say hello, I'm fine, but it's that beforehand where before I was aware of anything, I would just run around like a chicken without its head. Yeah. So, uh, so it's true. I could not live in Miami where I used to live because of all the memories and triggers. If I hear a certain song, I have to turn it off. So I just put myself any place that's going to make me happy and feel good. So it is. It's a complete lifestyle on every facet. So basically it's taking yourself out of that negative environment, putting yourself in a positive environment and then living life day to day, one day at a time and just keeping track and keeping on top of things is mm -hmm. how you do it. Absolutely. And not caring what people think. I couldn't do what I do because I know these people and I, that's why I don't get mad at bitchy girls because I know why they're bitchy. So yeah. I have compared her, you know, but I know people are like, oh, Marnie thinking she's doing her thing. And it's like, okay. <laughs> You do your talking. I don't care. I stay in my lane. Right. And that, once you let go of that, not caring, that for me, I was able to go leaps and bounds. Oh my God. You know, I, I felt the same way. Once I was able not to worry about what others thought. And as long as I was happy with myself, it was like a, like a, like a brick just like took, went off my shoulder and I, I was enlightened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 100%. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think, I think, you know, th if this is something that anyone has the ability of doing that you needs help. Now, if someone wants to reach out to you, where do they go to reach out to you? You can go to my website, peacelovemarnie.com. And I have some blogs up there, some tips. I have, you can book a 15 minute consult with me to see if I can help guide you. You know, I tell people I'm not a doctor. I share my experiences and I help people find peace where they are on their journey. And I just love talking as you can see. <laughs> I mean, I have crawled over the counter to the coffee lady at the airport to hug her. So I just am one of the most compassionate people and I love helping. So, you know, that's what I do. And you're like, I know you in another life. I have to. <laughs> you are definitely, you speak fluent me. <laughs> <laughs> website now before we go i just want one intake now when people are home because i know a lot of people get anxious and and they 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 go through a lot of the disorders that you have how do you feel about like what do you tell people to calm themselves down like do you suggest maybe meditation or yoga or some type of exercise to help them get the anxiousness out of their out of them their bodies when they go through anxiety and stress because people have so much stress in their lives it's you know even naturally people go through a lot of stress and anxiety. I tell people, let it out first. Bang your head against the tree if you have to. Scream, kick, whatever you have to do, get it out, but don't stay there. Um, I tell people, you have no idea what nature and going outside does. It did, it did wonders for me, just sitting, listening to the birds, um, meditating, and just taking those moments to try and quiet everything. Of course, yoga is just moving that body and your mind and soul, anything that you, I always say, let it out, you know, not on people, but, you know, scream, go for that walk, tell people I'm a little upset right now. I'm taking my own time out so mm -hmm. they communicate, so they don't worry. They know. Okay. And I mean, I took a lot of time out with my family, but get out, let it out, breathe. Don't react because that's only infesting yourself, picking right. and choose battles and, um, and then just, you know, but I will tell people more than two weeks when you see people in that bad state, it's time for them to start, you know, talking to them, mm -hmm. but initially let it out and then breathe. Now I, don't, I, I, can't build, I don't like when it all builds up, you know, it's like, yeah. Now, I, I think people should have a probably like a timeout each day, like, you know, try to get them even, either if it's before work or after work, you know, I feel like timeout is very important for somebody. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. When I walk in the house, I, my daughter, my, the, blah, 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 I'm like, stop, stop, stop. Let me walk in. This is, and I said, this is my time out. I remember Carrie Brad, Carrie did that with Eden when she came home one day on Sex in the City. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. Like, talk when I come home. But, you know, tell people you need your space. Put those boundaries there. You need your private time. You need your quiet time. Because then everything becomes more overwhelming. We're not feeling calm yet. And then an explosion happens. So right. know the timing as well. Know, work, know your audience. 
because I feel sometimes people feel guilty, you know, taking time out. And, you know, I don't think people should, should feel guilty. How do you feel about that? Never, because if we're not feeling our best, how can we give our best? Right. You have what's best for you. That is the only person because you cannot give the best of anybody. I couldn't be a talent each, a manager when I was going to be because I wasn't a hundred percent able to give my attention to my clients. Right. So you can't take up care of your children, your job. You have to take care of yourself. Give yourself permission. There's nothing wrong. If you're in the middle of a workout and your kids are calling for dinner, they can wait 10 minutes. Right. I, I to rush and leave everything. Uh-uh, no more. You know, nothing that's unreasonable. I'm not saying ignore your family, but yes. of course, do what's good for you. If you want that manicure, go get it. Yeah. Your kids will be fine for the half hour. I think that's great advice. You know, once again, I just want to tell everybody the title of your book so they know where they can find it and it's can get it. True to Myself, Peace Love Marnie. It's on Amazon or my website, peacelovemarnie.com. There's a link there to get it as well. And I, I tell everybody, if you are not in gratitude and appreciate your life after reading it, I will give you $10,000 cash. No, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 okay. By chapter three, they're like, I love my mom or their parents and the stuff I've gone through. If listening to me now, you will never realize that's the girl in the book, which I love. Wow. You know, I think everything you're doing is great, you know, and I do feel like, you know, we have so much in common because we really live life in very similar ways. And, you know, I'm so glad that you came on the show and uh, I'm so glad you went over all this with everybody because everybody goes through, you know, I know so many people that, you know, they say 70% of the people come from dysfunctional families and a lot of the dysfunctionalism carries over and, you know, people are left with so many different disorders and and, you know, people don't uh, don't know how to show love or they have anxiety or they, you know, they have post-traumatic stress disorder and they just blow up for no reason because it r reminds them of something from the past. And I also, uh, you know, like you said, I think, you know, people have to realize the past is the past and it, the present is what's important. And I love the information you provide because I think in the present, if they follow the things that you're teaching on your website and what you're teaching in your book, they can move ahead and have a healthy, happy and productive life. So thank you so much for what you do. I think, you know, I think you're doing a tremendous job and you are helping the universe and the people who live in this universe. So once again, thank you for everything and everything you do.